Greetings, people. How's the view from there? I think you can see all right. Okay. So I'm just going to give it a few secs. But nobody's online yet. Um, is there behind us? Let me see if I can move this somewhere. That's pretty good. Hey. Hello Louis, thanks for joining, I'm getting ready and we're going to be talking about how to work with um, horn for knife handles, so not antler, uh, not tusks, horn, they, or not teeth either. Um, hello Gerald, welcome, I'm talking horn today, not heat treating, sorry, uh, if I can get this through quickly, I'll talk some heat treating quickly. Um, just seeing how black I am in my image. Um, I've been forging out some Serbian chefs. Those are familiar with these. Pretty cool cleavers. So I forged them out of uh, plow discs. So I first profile it. Thanks, Gerald. I'm, I'm really loving that dagger. I sold it already. It's going uh, as soon as lockdown's um, over to the US of A. Um, so it's going there, which is nice. So it gives me a bit more time on a bit more finishing. Um, hello Vincent. Um, how are you doing? So Vincent is a guy I get a lot of my horns and stuff from. And you, know, you guys need stuff. Go and see him in um, Cambranos and Son in Midrand. So beautiful, beautiful supplier of, of exotic goods and curios and, and anything you may need. So, so today I'm talking horn and, and he's always got and, and willing to sell. Um, I hope, Vincent, you are, aren't you? Um, so, it's not just to me, it's to the public. So, the uh, more I wipe, the blacker I get you. Hello, Todd. Okay, so I wanted to talk about working with horn. So, horn, antler, teeth, tusks are all different things. Tusks you get in elephants, in, in old mammoth, and in... Um, Warthog. And they about the only tusks um, I'm really aware of. This is Impala horn. And this is Blessbok horn. And my wife says the screen is dirty. So it's not my face, it's the screen. So sorry, just trying to <laughs> give you guys a lick. <laughs> Lick, lick, lick. Hello, Steve. How are you guys doing in the States? Um, there we go. I think that's a bit better. It's not as blurry, which is nice. So I'm going to try start again. I'm talking about horn, how to use horn for handles. So horn is very different from tusks. Tusks you get on, on mammoth, you get on elephants, you get on warthog. Uh, teeth you get on hippo. So teeth and tusks are also two different animals at the end of the day. Um... Oh, thanks, Joel. Uh, so, that's my wife, Lorraine. Hello. <laughs> so, teeth, uh, hippo, the, everyone says hippo ivory. Hippos are not ivory, they are teeth. Um, and they're, they're, they're quite difficult to work with. Um, they've, they're very hard and, and soft. They're hard on the enamel and soft on the, on the pith. Um, but today I'm talking horns. So, we get, we get all types in Africa. 
So that is Buffalo. That's, <laughs> that's Cape Buffalo, not the uh, Indian or Eastern Buffalo, quite a different beastie. This is the one that kills. I've got a good old Vuvuzela, Kuru Horn. I've got a Gnu. And what we do with that? How's it, Niels? Um, I don't know, that's cut. So we'll put that to that one side. Uh, my wife's giving me this one. I don't know what it is. What is this, Laura? I don't know. It's hanging Yeah, on okay. Wall. That's one of my wall ornaments. <laughs> but we get this animal too. I'm sure you guys who, who go do a lot more hunting will us. know what that is and tell us. But horn availability is, is fantastic. And, and, and if you go to a lot of these game farms, they just lie on piles and they, they just rot there. Um, because And a lot of knife makers don't really know how to work with them. So... What you need to do is to take the bone out. So horn have a bone in the middle, which is very porous. You can also use that bone and impregnate it with resin and get a very nice scale in itself with that bone. But I'm showing you how to use the horn itself. So there's two options you can do with the horns. Number one is a hidden tang and number one is a full tang. So your, your basic prep work for a hidden tang is to get your bolster on okay and to make sure it's going to go through your material so i've just welded on a bit of six millimeter threaded rod here because i'm going to tap the thread in my pommel and just screw it on on the end so for this particular blade i want to put on a piece of bless book horn or in english bless book I'm not too sure what it is in english bless book so bless book horn and what you have to look at when you're looking at your horns, and because they come in all different shapes and sizes, mommy bear, papa bear, and baby bear, you've got to get one that's going to work with your knife. And I'm, I'm choosing the smallest one here because that's looking most viable. So what I do first is I have a look down the back and I choose the most straightest parts of the horn because they all tend to curve in all sorts of crazy sorts of ways so from the second notch here up until the fourth one it's fairly straight and that's the bit i'm going to use um gerald there's a guy watching now his name is vincent van straten um he's from cambranos and sons in midrand and they, they, they have a lot of horn. They, they create it into heroes for themselves, but he, he also sells to the knife makers. So, so check him out on Facebook and give him a ring. So that's the bit of, of horn I'm going to use. So I'm going to cut it off there and there on the band saw quickly. So don't go away, I'll be back now. what I'm going to be using. Go back, go back there. Make myself useful. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I just have to see if it goes on. And that's going to go on like that. So I like it this way around with the grooves on the top. Now the only animals that comply and give you grooves on the bottom are sable, or water buck, and there's another one, I forget the name, Yala, I think, where the grooves are on the bottom. So so sable, as you know, is about 160,000 rand to shoot the animal, so the horns aren't that readily available, but they have the most beautiful thick horn that you can use either as a full tang or hidden tang um, option.
So this is a piece of sable horn I had left. So if anybody out there has sable horn, I want some. So sable horn is really good. This is best box, and that's going to go in like that. So as I've shown you, I've welded on a bit of 6mm um, threaded rod on there. And that's going to go on there. So I'm just going to bend this. And that's why 6 mm is nice, because we can just take it to the vise and give it a little bend. So that it comes out of the middle of the back here. So I can go a bit lower. Okay. So that's nearly right. I'm going to keep that there. No, take it out. Just bend it a bit more. So it's really easy to bend. Now understanding that the um, threaded rod isn't to hold the knife together, just to hold the butt cap in place. So there's going to be resin all over the thread up until here so that's going to hold it in nice and firmly so looking at this i haven't cut it very straight so i'm just going to go to the grinder and just cut that flush uh grind it flush so i need to put on my eyes Hello Stuart and Keith. So, Marius and Darren, thank you guys for joining. So I'm talking about how to use horn for a knife handle. So preparation is key. You've got to make sure your bolster is on first. And in this case it was uh, all the more important because my tang is only 4 mils wide on this little uh, utility. Yet my threaded rod is 6. So you can't weld that on and then put your bolster on because it ain't going to fit over the top. So you first got to get your bolster on, weld on your threaded rod, cut your piece of horn, and this is blessed book, grind it flush, and make sure it's sitting flush there. So you can put some spaces in there, up front if you want, um, or I'm just going to do this one flush. So my tang isn't coming out in the middle yet, so it needs more bending. So I'm just going to bend it a bit more, so about another centimeter at least, and that should do the job. Dolphin Dez, thank you for joining me as well. And Tony. The Tony Bennett. No, Hendrick. And Hendrick. So, there's a bit of tweaking. And just make sure it's coming out in the middle. And I'm now happy with that. So, how do we get that on there? So, first we're going to epoxy that in place. So, we're going to put epoxy here. So, we just need a little bit of, of quick set epoxy. I'm going to mix them up quickly, equal quantities of each, this is the last I have. Hendrix says, thanks Hilton, very much needed info. Pleasure Hendrix. So, mix that up. And that used to be the wife's supper bowl. Never was, this is always a workshop bowl. <laughs> always, always a designated from the day you bought it <laughs> that's a workshop ball so you just want to put some epoxy there we want to make sure we get it in the tang area as well because we don't want our resin flowing out and this is five minute epoxy it's going to set really quickly so i'm going to just push that on place you can always adjust this afterwards as well so that's fine don't stress too much if it isn't in the middle as long as you get that in place then that's fine so that's now ready for a hidden tang horn handle. We pour resin in here, that's going to set overnight. You can thread up a bit of um, uh, brass, screw it onto there, and then just grind it down. So as I said, you can either uh, put your horn curving that away, which I prefer, and some people like the finger grips to be on the other side, um, but I don't see them as finger grips, they're just, they're just part of the animal, they're just horn. So that's on there now. That's going to be filled with resin, and then we're going to screw the cap on. 
So I'm just going to put that in a vise and let it sit. So I need that vise for something else, but not that one. And put it over here. There's my horn stock. As you can see, I've got I've got a lot. So I've got a lot of knives to make. All right. So that that is hidden tanks. Uh, buffalo horn. That's all solid. So you can use that as a full tank or hidden tank. This bit here, you can see how thick that is. That's nice full full tank. So you can just cut that off. And I like the scale bits and the barky bits on the outside. But you can see how thick it is. You can actually grind that back a bit and use that um, and grind it down. Polished up, it gives you a beautiful um, chatoyance and sheen to it. But you can use there, there for hidden uh, tangs. You can drill straight through it. So you can get a nice sort of curved bowie shaped knife out of there. And, and um, this, you don't have to do too much resin because it's quite solid. The smaller horns, we need resin. Okay, so what do we do with a full tang with horns? So this is a fun bit. So we pick ourselves a nice bit of horn and I'm going to use best for horn again. And this time I'm looking for the thickest part. You can see it's quite thick over there. But we want matching scales. So I'm going to cut it off over here and then down the middle. Step number one. two scales but that isn't going to fit nicely on a handle so we need to flatten it out we flatten it by heating it okay so there's various ways you can heat it you can use a blowtorch and you just heat up the side um, or you can boil it in oil which seems to be the longer route be warned though this does stink it stinks bad it's burning hair um, so you can so we're going to squash this flat so i want to get this edge off if i don't get that edge off it's going to curl in so i'm just going to go to the grinder quickly and get that off low battery okay so I've ground off those edges that have an opportunity to cool in um, so just give me a sec uh, Ken get that get the, the, the battery charger and plug it in here by moment just warning okay so we're just gonna plug in the battery too apparently I'll let it run low right so we want to put that on here I haven't shaped this handle yet but it gives you an idea of the curve and what we need it for so we can't use it like that obviously what we want to do is flatten it so to flatten it we're going to fire up the forge So 
Uh, so you can do this with a blowtorch. We can stick it in boiling oil. I've heard a couple other ways of doing it too, but I can't remember that right now. It's just getting nice and black. You can show you that it's getting nice and warm. So we don't want to damage the outside because that's a good looking good. That smells yummy. Okay, so that's enough. Put it on a piece of wood here. On a piece of wood there. Open up the device. Get in, wrap it up. And watch it flattening there. It helps to have a nice big vice like mine. And so we wait. I'm just going to get the other knife quickly. Another one that epoxy is dry already, so that's waterproof, so you can still fill that with resin, leave it overnight, tomorrow morning, tap yourself a thread on a uh, piece of brass and then screw it on, pin it over over the thread. And that's as long as it takes, it should be cool by now. We can open that up. There it is nice and flat. Hold the other one next to Which is weird. So, that's what we had. And that's what we've got. We do the same to the other side. And we'll have a set of matching scales. So you can grind this flat. You can see I didn't clamp it enough over there, so that's fine. You can heat it up again and clamp it, or you can decide to use um, that back area there. So obviously it's a bit thin, so you can use that with a couple liners. And that's how it's done, the Rutherford Forge way. So guys, thank you very much. If there are any questions, please don't hesitate to inbox me. Um, I'll get back to you. And um, I hope you found that informative and um, enjoyed the session. Tomorrow, Gerald, we are going to talk about heat treating. So I won't let you down now. I'm going to get a few knives ready. We'll harden this one. And we'll go through the um, heat treating process so that I can get these scales on there. Uh, I need to show you something. <laughs> What's up? Brag, brag, brag. This is my dagger for the 24 hour build. Put it in perspective, it's quite big. I've got a loop here somewhere, can fit in. That's already sold, going to USA. Um, once again, thanks for watching. Catch you tomorrow for the heat treating.